Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, getting ready to go through all of the rules associated with Passover using both the list of the 613 commandments given in the first five books of the Bible. And we're also going to jump over into the book of Jubilees, chapter 49, and we're going to look at the rules over there as it puts a little more clarification on these rules. Now, I'm going to use this document over here that I found at uh, jufact.org. It's talking about uh, the 613 uh, mitzvot, I guess it's commandments. And uh, and how, you know, a guy named Rambam has gone down through the scripture and pulled out all of the commandments in the Bible. And in this website, they went as far as putting all of the rules into categories. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump down in here to where it says times and seasons. And we're going to come down here. We're going to do a search for the word Passover. And we're going to jump down here and look at the times this Passover is listed. Now, in now we'll find the majority of them in the section called Times and Seasons. And so we're going to go through these pretty quickly. I've done a class back on these laws many years ago. So look for a repost of <clears throat> look for a repost of an excerpt from that class. It was one of the first classes on Hermes Academy. Um, where we went through and did a basically a fact check on this Jewish document. This is a Jewish document. And so we basically had to go in and as you can see by some of the words that they use in here. Um, and so we went in and just did a fact check on that. And so in that class we posted many years ago, we had went in and looked at the verses and compared the King James Version to what these guys had came up with. So look for that repost over there, but we're going to run through these pretty quickly before we jump over into the book of Jubilees. Okay, so now we see that the first time that the word Passover is listed is way down here when it says to celebrate the festivals. And it has Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, which of course uh, those two is the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. And then Sukkot is the Feast of Tabernacles that comes in the fall. But from this verse, what I want to point out is how Passover seems to replace unleavened bread. There are seven feasts that you can find over there in the book of Leviticus and Passover and unleavened bread are listed separately as they're two different feasts falling on two different days. Passover is a day long feast where the feast of unleavened bread is a week long feast and the feast of unleavened bread is what you will find if you go to Exodus 23 and 14 it's going to say the feast of unleavened bread and let me show you that right quick. Now looking over here at Exodus 23 and 15, it says, Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. And in 26 it says, And the feast of harvest, which is at Shavuot. And down here it says, And the feast of end gathering, which is Sukkot. So the word Passover is being used as an, a replacement for unleavened bread. But we have to remember that it is a separate feast, they're not the same. They, that's commonly done. In this, even in the scripture, it uses Passover, especially in the New Testament. It uses the word Passover as a replacement of unleavened bread. And it has a little bit of confusion to it as people think they are the same feast. But they're different. One feast, you drink wine and eat lamb. And, and the other feast, you eat unleavened bread and take these... Uh, religious materials out of your house they're, they're totally different feasts but I just wanted to point that out because as we go down through here it doesn't say unleavened bread in many of these cases it's talking about unleavened bread like this one and in other times it's talking about Passover so let's go down through these understanding that Passover could be used interchangeably with the Feast of Unleavened Bread Okay, now that was rule 112. Let's jump down here to rule 115. It says to remove Shemets on the eve of Passover. Now, this word right here is not in the Bible, this Shemets. So let's jump over here to Exodus 12 and 15 and see what that is. 
Now 12 and 15 says, Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first day ye shall put away the leaven out of your houses. So this is what that Shemetz is, is leaven, leaven out of your houses. Now this is, the, this is a first era book. If you follow my channel, you know what I mean by first era. This is back there in Moses' time. In the Messiah's time, up there with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is when we entered the second era. And that's when we got a whole New Testament of the Bible. And now we are in the third era. So these, when you, so, and I say that to say when you go back and you look at a lot of what went on back there in Moses' time, you have to understand that those were living parables and you have to seek for the spiritual meaning to what all was going on back there. So when he says leaven, what does he mean by leaven? All right, now for that, I'm gonna jump over to the second era because in, in this era, in the first era, leaven actually meant yeast and anything that makes bread rise. And so what they were doing um, and we still do. We still remove stuff like uh, yeast and baking soda and baking powder and anything that will make bread rise out of our houses. Um, we don't have any light bread or any bread that you know has yeast in it in the house. That stuff is taken out. And so when it says shemitz, that's what it's and take that stuff out of his house, out of your house. That's what it's talking about. But let's go over and get a second era understanding of what leaven means. And for that, we have to jump all the way up to the book of Matthew, looking in chapter 16, uh, verses 11 and 12, is where we find out what leavening is. You see right here, he said, this is the Messiah telling his disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And then verse 12 says, then they understood that he bade them beware of the leaven he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now, it should be real easy to put these two together because we understand, first of all, that um, where in the old time they were talking about bread made of flour. You know, now when we hear about bread, we, we understand it to mean the word of God. And the yeast, like we said back then, was something that made that bread rise. Well, instead of having a whole lump that didn't have any yeast in it, it would have just been a solid lump of bread. Well, that is, it is that doctrine that is the yeast of today. And what is he talking about? The yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, we understand who the Pharisees and the Sadducees were back then. And so it should be pretty easy to make the connection on who the Pharisees and the Sadducees are today. It is the same, the same guys that are running the churches of today. Back then they had Senate, they had the temple there, and you had these priestly guys that was in there and over the priestly over the church ceremonies and such. Well, today we don't call them Pharisees and Sadducees. We call them uh we call them reverends and clergy and uh, and a lot of other names that they like to go by like prophets and deacons and reverend pastor deacon dr. Doug these are the church officials so when he's telling us to remove the what is it say over there the shemits from out of our house what he's saying is to remove all religious doctrine out of the house anything that adds to the word of God like this would include um, books written by the religious leaders of the day this would include um, sermons or it would include you know commentary like this is where people are adding leavening to the scripture and for one week we're asked to remove all of that stuff out of the house so that's the week that you would avoid church doctrine or anything like church doctrine. We take anything that's talking about the scripture out of our house except the scripture itself. That's the only thing that's in the house is that unleavened look lump which is the bible which is the third testament of the bible the apocrypha all scriptural documents. We we leave that in the house and that's what we study for a week. 
and we also don't go to church that's the week that they're gonna have Easter Sunday and so that's the week that you will avoid and not go down there to the church and not get that Easter lecture all right but let's go on so back over here in rule 115 it says on the eve of Passover you go in and you remove that stuff from the house you take it out of the house on the eve of Passover that's you know on the as you starting the 14th day of the first month that's when you go in and you start taking that stuff out of the house then it says to rest on the first day of Passover now this right here like we said a few minutes ago it uses the words interchangeably this right here is talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread because the Feast of Unleavened Bread starts on the 15th day of the month which is a sabbatical day it's a Sabbath day and that's why you arrest on that day whereas Passover starts on the 14th day of the month that's when you're actually going to be that's when a lot of people are going to be slaughtering lambs they're going to be doing a lot of work preparing for unleavened bread Remember, these are two different holidays here, two different holy days here. So you'll actually rest on the unleavened bread. Like I said, it does add confusion when you lump the two together um, because you're not going to be resting on this day. You're actually going to be working as you're taking all of those books out of the house and you know all of that different stuff, taking all of the leaven out of the house. Um, you're actually going to be, that's a lot of work involved. I know it is around our house because we have a, tend to have a lot of books around here to, to like homeschooling books that we have to take out and you know other you know commentary by some Bibles have a little too much commentary in it and we have to take those out so it tends to be a lot of work but on the Sabbath day we rest on that day all right now now down here 117 is the same rule see how it's coming from the same verse here and it says not to do work on the first day of Passover again it's because it is a Sabbath day then down here and that's talking again it's talking about unleavened bread and down here 118 again is coming out of the same verse here so when you say that there's 613 different laws in the Bible that's the easiest way to find this document done by that Ram Bam dude many many hundreds of years ago but when you look at it closely it's not really 613 because he's actually using the same verses to come up with what one two three look like you gonna get four rules out of the same verses right here but this one says to rest on the seventh day. Let's jump back over there and look at it. See right here where it says that on the first day shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day shall be a holy convocation and no manner of work shall be done in them. So that tends to line up there. 117, 118 to rest on those days. 119 says uh, not to do work on the seventh day. And then down here, it says on 120, it says to eat the matzah on the first night of Passover. So let's look over there at 1218 and see what that's talking about matzah. It's talking about the first month on the 14th day of the month at evening you shall eat unleavened bread so this is what this is telling us is that on Passover to eat unleavened bread as well um, you know the feast of unleavened bread starts on the 15th and you will eat unleavened bread for that entire week but it tells you also to eat unleavened bread on the 14th day which is Passover One twenty one says no Shemets be in the Israelites possession during Passover. That's that leaven that we were talking about. You read that over there in twelve and nineteen. One twenty two says not to eat any food containing that Shevets on Passover. And I think I might just say leaven from now on because it's telling us not to eat leaven on the feast of Passover. 123 is telling us not to eat uh, leaven on Passover. 124 is saying that no leaven shall be in the house at all 
again, that means stuff like yeast and stuff like white bread and light bread and that kind of stuff. But, you know, it also means church doctrine. You know, that ain't the week to be watching TV in and that kind of thing. Now, 125 is a little bit different when it says to discuss the departure from Egypt on the first night of Passover. Let's jump over and look at that one. That's this verse down here. It says, and thou shalt show thy sons in that day, saying, this is done because that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of the Egypt. Right. So it's telling us to tell our children why we do Passover, why we remove that material from our house. And because we're coming out of Egypt now, again, we have to look for the spiritual meanings in all of this. It's not talking about all of those many, many thousands of years ago because we now live in a spiritual Egypt. And when we come out of a spiritual Egypt, that's what's going to happen to us as well is he's going to take away that religious doctrine from of it, from us. A lot of that religious doctrine is getting it in our way, especially when you think about stuff like Easter and Christmas and um, liberty, as they teach us, we're not supposed to adhere to the laws of Moses and some of the other doctrines that, you know, we learn in church. When we do come out of this spiritual Egypt, we're going to go back to that unleavened loaf and find out, you know, what the father really meant for us because it never did change. Books like Exodus, Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all of that stuff still applies to us today. Now, those are the only rules that comes out of the section called times and seasons but there is another place way down here in rule 450 and it's talking about the temple and the sanctuary and the sacred objects and we are waiting for the third temple at least all of humanity is we just did a class not too long ago how the third temple was already open to many who know how to find it um, but all of humanity is waiting for that third temple. And so, you know, they will be interested to know how it is that we are supposed to observe uh, Passover during that. So let's take a look and see what it says. Now, 450 is talking about second Passover. And I, what I'd like to bring out about this rule, 450, second Passover, is... You know, this is the only holy day feast where you actually get a second chance. If for some reason you find yourself unclean during the first month on the 14th day of the month on during that week and you did not keep Passover, you do have another chance to do it a month later. This is the only one that shows to me that shows how important it is, is you actually given a second chance a month later. Now, down here in 452, it says not to leave any flesh of the Paschal lamb brought on the second Passover until the morning. This is also true for the first one as well. Anything that we um, is left over, we're not really allowed to eat it the next day. Um, you have to consume it all in that one night. And then this one down here. Um, also applies to the first Passover and it says not to it also applies to the Passover that's found in the first month. It says not to break a bone of the Paschal lamb brought on the second Passover because not a bone of the scripture will be broken. And so for those who are having lamb that year, um, those two rules will apply to the material as well as the spiritual. Remember, all these rules apply to the, to the spiritual. So, you know, for those who aren't going to have lamb, aren't going to have wine, and they'll, they'll focus primarily on the spiritual meaning. But those who have wine and, and lamb, they, they, they will also... Um, look at the material and how you know they have to burn it um, if there's any left over to the morning they have to burn it by the fire and then how you know when they cook it in the first place they can't break any bones in in the uh, lamb there 
All right, so now those are the rules that you can find over there in the King James Version of the Bible. So now let's jump over here to the book of Jubilees, chapter 49, that talks about the Passover regulations regarding its celebration. Now, Jubilees is another book written by Moses. You may not have heard of this book, but it's called Jubilees because it talks about the years, the Jubilee years. Every 50 years, it, it kind of gives us, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's where we get a lot of the timing of this stuff that happened back there in you know that ancient time is because Moses wrote the book of Jubilees and put numbers along to the dates and stuff that stuff happened but I, over here at the end of the book uh, in chapter 49 it talks about Passover. The very end of chapter 50 it talks about the Sabbath day if you want to check that out. The Sabbath day rules. But over here in chapter 49 we're going to talk about the Passover rules. Um, let's go down through these. It says, uh, verse 1 says, Remember the commandment which the Lord commanded thee concerning the Passover, that thou shouldest celebrate it in its season on the 14th of the first month, that thou shouldest kill it before it is evening. And that they should eat it by night on the evening of the 15th from the time of the setting of the sun. All right. Now, for those who are working with lambs this year and for those that are not, those that are working with the wine and, and, and even the scripture there, getting the essence of the word, you understand what's going on. A lot of the work is done on the evening of the 14th. Now, you remember that the 14th is not a it's not a sabbatical night. It's not a Sabbath day. That's why those guys were able to kill the lamb on the Sabbath day. But then they actually didn't eat it until the evening of the 15th. You read right here that you eat it by night on the evening of the 15th of the month. Now, jumping back over in the King James Version in the Gospels, I want to show you a little bit of how those guys, how it played out over there with the Messiah and his disciples. Now, we look right here in Mark chapter 14, verse 12. And he says, In the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? So, well, well, now what's going on here is the disciples have killed the Passover. If you remember that it was supposed to be one lamb per household, so they would have had one lamb that they would have shared amongst the 13 or tw uh, of them. And amongst the 13 of them and so they've already uh, killed the Passover now they wanted to know where where it is that they're going to eat it all right so verse 2 says for in this night the beginning of the festival and the beginning of the joy you were eating the Passover in Egypt when all the powers of Mestima had been let loose to slay all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh to the firstborn of the captive made servant in the meal and to the cattle talking about the death angel which they call it Mestima the Old Testament used the word Lord all of the time which you know included just about every spiritual being in the Old Testament that they called every one of them Lord and that's why it makes it seem like the Lord actually went in and killed all of these people but you know here's some additional detail we find over there in Jubilees and no it was actually this death angel you can look in you can look him up in the angel encyclopedia and find out who this Mestima guy was and but notice this part right here where he says the beginning of the festival and the beginning of the joy talking about Passover being the first feast of the year and how it is the beginning of our joy. Let's look at verse three. And this is the sign which the Lord gave them into every house on the lentils of which they saw the blood of the lamb of the first year into that house. They should not enter to slay but should pass by it that all those should be saved that were in the house because the sign of the blood was on the lentils okay now again we have to find the spiritual meaning to all of this there's a lot of people who aren't going to be sacrificing lambs there's a lot of people who there's a lot of people that are there's going to there's a people who's who you know watching this video that is going to be focusing more on the the wine and the unleavened bread, but you're not going to see them out there splashing any wine on their doorpost. They're not going to be doing that, and so it is this this blood that we have to put on our hearts, and so.
And, and so I, I bring this out to, to, to reinforce how we have to find the spiritual meaning to all of this. Not to take anything away from anything anybody's doing out there. Um, I mean, you got to eat something on that day. It might as well be lamb. You know, we're going to eat hamburger on that day. You know, you're probably just going to eat chicken. But, you know, but they will be doing so remembering that it was the Messiah that was the Paschal Lamb and that it is his blood that's going to prevent the uh, firstborn from being slain. It is his blood that's going to be this sign that's talking about right here. All right, so let's go on. He says, And the powers of the Lord did everything according as the Lord commanded them. And they passed by all the children of Israel. And the plague came not upon them to destroy from among them any soul, either of cattle or man or dog. Now, that's, you know, kind of kind of strange to think about how, you know, a death angel was wiping them out, but he was killing dogs and cattle and everything back then that didn't have this 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 sign on the lentils. And I believe it's I believe it's done that way today too. It's just a spiritual death now where, you know, one could find himself in a form of temptation if he doesn't keep these feasts in now times, you know. Hopefully nobody's going to drop dead. You know, I, I don't know that that day is coming again that where we're going to have a physical death for those who don't keep the feast of Passover. But I believe it's all now a spiritual death, and I believe a lot of people are dying each and every year that they don't keep this feast. Verse 5 says, And the plague was very grievous in Egypt, and there was no house in Egypt where there was not one dead, and weeping and lamentation. And again, we're recognizing that this is a spiritual Egypt nowadays. Now, let's look at verse 6. And all Israel was eating the flesh of the Paschal lamb and drinking the wine and was louding and blessing and giving thanks to the Lord God of their fathers and was ready to go forth from under the yoke of Egypt from the evil bondage. Now, that's something right there that jumped out at me a little bit. Um, maybe you knew it all at the time, but how they were drinking wine even back then. It wasn't just the lamb. It wasn't just the unleavened bread because they weren't commanded to do so. But they were also drinking wine back there. And that word louding, saying they were praising, extolling, or exclaiming, glorifying the, the name of the Lord is what they were doing. Well, let's go on. Verse 7 says, And remember thou this day all the days of thy life, and observe it from year to year all the days of thy life, once a year on its day, according to all the law thereof, and do not adjourn it from day to day or from month to month. Now, I think the most important part of this scripture is realizing that we were never supposed to stop doing the Feast of Passover. The Jewish community, they've stopped the world from doing the Feast of Passover, saying that, you know, they need a temple or whatever, and, you know, trying to convince the rest of the world that they're not supposed to be keeping these feasts because they don't have a temple. Well, I say that once those feast days were instituted, they didn't have a temple. And we were told to keep those feast days from generation to generation for forever. You know, I've asked a few pastors in my life, you know, what does forever mean? You know, when he said that we're supposed to keep those feast days for forever, what, what was he talking about? You know, when does forever stop and why don't we keep them now? I haven't gotten an answer yet. So let's go on. Verse 9 says, And the man who is free from uncleanness and does not come to observe it on occasion of its day, so as to bring an acceptable offering before the Lord and to eat and to drink before the Lord on the day of its festival, that man who is clean and close at hand shall be cut off because he offered not the oblation of the Lord in its appointed season. He shall take the guilt upon himself. All right. So now, now this is what the King James Version says over there is that we will be cut off if we don't keep the Feast of Passover. Now, this is why I said a few minutes ago that it is a spiritual death because he's talking about being cut off. And what is he talking about being cut off from? Being cut off from our people, being cut off from Israel. And, you know, 
and it's not a, a bloodline Israel that he's talking about. It's a spiritual Israel that he's talking about when he says that we will be cut off. And so that puts me in mind that it's a spiritual death that we'll go through if we don't keep this feast. And I think that's what you see a lot out there when the people don't know what's going on. When you try to talk to them about the word, when you try to you know explain how we're supposed to be keeping the law and such, and it, and it's like you're speaking another language to these to these guys. Sometimes I believe it's because they're they're cut off. You know, they're 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 separated from his people, and you know until they get this part right, they they aren't going to be able to understand the word. The word is not going to touch him on their heart the way it touches us in our hearts. They're cut off. Verse 10 says, let the children of Israel come and observe the Passover on the day of its fixed time, on the 14th day of the first month between the evenings, from the third part of the day to the third part of the night, for two portions of the day are given to the light and a third part to the evening. Now, I can give a whole class on this part right here where it's talking about two parts of the day are given to the light and a third part to the night, but I'm going to save that for another time because... I can also listen to one too because I can't say I fully understand it enough to go ahead and give that class. So I'm going to skip that part. If you understand that part right there, go ahead and put it in the description. And I know when I say that, go ahead and put it down there in the comments. And I know when I say that, you know, I'm basically picking a fight. Those who want to, you know, say that the, the uh, day starts at sunset and all that kind of stuff. But, you know. All right, now what I want to bring out about this verse right here is how it's from the evening to the evening is the Passover. So going into the uh, 14th day of the evening, remember that the day starts in the evening time, not in the morning time. That's that doctrine that we were talking about a few minutes ago, that church doctrine that teaches you that the day starts in the morning time. We have to get away from that, get back to the Bible that tells us that the that the new day starts in the evening time. And so when he's saying right here from evening to evening, that's the whole day. You start in one evening and you go to the next evening. Between that time is when people will be drinking the wine. They will be eating the unleavened bread. A lot of people will be slaughtering the lamb and roasting the lamb and fire. All of that will be going on from that evening to that evening. Now, you got to remember that it's during the Passover time is that they are actually slaughtering the lamb and doing all of the work. It is on the uh, 15th night, like we read up there in the first verse, is that they're going to actually eat the, the Passover lamb during that sabbatical night. On the Sabbath night is when they're actually going to eat it. So the Passover starts from the 14th day at even and goes from even to even that's when everybody's doing all of the work and getting all of their preparation done so on that next evening on the evening of the 15th is when they're actually going to go in and enjoy all of the hard work that they've put in the day before 11 says, This is that which the Lord commanded thee that thou shouldest observe it between the evenings and it is not permissible to slay it during any period of the light, but during the period bordering the eve on the evening, and let them eat it at the time of the evening until the third part of the night, and whatever is left over of all its flesh from the third part of the night and onwards, let them burn it with fire. Okay, so remembering that the Passover starts from evening to evening again that's when they're actually going to kill the Passover that's when they put the Messiah on the cross the disciples went in on the 14th of the month and they killed the lamb and then they prepared that lamb on the 14th day of the evening but remember it was really all about the Messiah because after the Messiah had went through that last supper with those guys and gave his last sermon that you can read about over there in the book of John he was betrayed by Judas that night and it was the next morning that he 
had to go before Pilate and all of those guys for his trial and they put him on the cross. That was the Passover day. This is that was not a sabbatical day. That was the fourteenth day of the month that they went and they strung him up. There was all people down there watching him as they, they hung him up on the cross. But if you remember the story, they had to get him down off of the cross by sunset because they was actually starting the feast of unleavened bread. And that's why Mary and Martha they wasn't able to go to next day to see the body is because it was a sabbat a sabbath day they had to go on the third day to see the body they put him on the cross on the first day the morning of the 14th is when he went through his trials and was crucified later that day the morning of the 15th they was in a sabbatical day they didn't do anything that day and the next and that evening and then the morning of the 16th is when Mary and Martha went down there to the tomb and found it empty. So again, all of that work has to be done on the Passover evening. Now notice down here it says, whatever is left over from all the flesh, they have to burn it with fire. So anything you don't eat that night, you have to burn it in the fire. And so that could be a lot of food going to waste if you don't plan this thing properly. You wake up and re remember, you know, the angels will wake you up in the middle of the night and remind you that you got to get rid of all of this meat. And you can end up throwing it on the fire and burning it. So you have to plan properly. Know what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. Verse 13 says, And they shall not cook it with water, nor shall they eat it raw, but roast it on the fire. They shall eat it with diligence, its head with its inwards thereof, and its feet they shall roast with fire, and not break any bone thereof, for of the children of Israel no bone shall be crushed. Meaning there will be no body left from the children of Israel. Um, we understand that we are spiritual Israel. We understand that who he's talking about is all the same people that were there back there in Exodus chapter 12 will be the same individuals reincarnated in the flesh that will that will be uh, that will be reunited spiritually and everybody's going to make it. There's not going to be anybody that's going to be left out that got those promises all those many many thousands of years ago. But notice right here how you can't boil it. They ate a lot of boiled meat back there in the in the in the in those days. Um, I believe for two reasons. One, they was making sure they got all of the blood out, and for two, you know, where were you gonna get the oil from to fry it? You know, they had to have, you know, the, they they could have just boiled it and not worry about any type of grease in, in order to fry it. Like we like fried foods today. They didn't have, you know. They didn't have Walmart so they could go buy oil by the gallon, and so it would been a e so it would have been a lot easier just to boil meat. But they couldn't do it on this time. They had to actually roast it by the fire. Now, given a little bit of my testimony, last year I tried to roast the lamb under the ground, and it didn't work. And I thought about it, you know, putting that lamb under the under the ground was kind of baking it. It wasn't really roasting it with fire. And so this year I'm going to do something a little bit differently. Um, having learned my lesson fire means fire but look at verse 14 he says for this reason the Lord commanded the children of Israel to observe the Passover on the day of its fixed time and they should not break a bone thereof for it is a festival day and a day commanded and there may, and there may be no passing over from day to day and month to month but on a day of his festival, let it be observed. See, this is why I'm putting out so many classes talking about how the feast of 2020 seems to be on a wrong date. It's a big deal. We can't do it on another day. Just because the calendar says it's on one day, that don't mean, you know, is the father going to take that as an excuse? That's a man-made calendar. 
you know, and are we being obedient to man when he puts it on the wrong day? We have to get out there and find out, you know, for ourselves, you know, for sure, be for sure. Go out there doing a new moon festival. We need to get out there and try to see that thing. If you're not going to go out there and feel for yourself, at least take time to pray for clear skies. For those of us who are out there, you know, clouds makes it really difficult to see the new moon. It's already hard to see anyway. And then if, any, if there's any clouds in the sky, it makes it really tough. So pray for clear skies on those nights so that we can make sure that we do this on the correct day. We can't change it. You know, we can't get it wrong. Look at 15. He says, And do thou command the children of Israel to observe the Passover throughout their days every year, once a year, on the day of its fixed time. And it shall come for a memorial well pleasing before the Lord. And no plague shall come upon them to slay or to smite in the year in that year in which they celebrate the Passover in its season every respect according to his command now I'm gonna go ahead and make a prediction we're gonna have a lot of trouble in America this year because the calendars are saying that the feast day starts on the 8th and the new moon is saying that the feast day starts on the 7th but who is man going to listen to is he going to listen to the moon is he going to listen to coaching the fight jumping up and down saying it's on the wrong day it's on the wrong day it's on the wrong day or is he going to listen to the calendar and go ahead and do it on the 8th well What's going to happen? First of all, people are going to be cut off because they did it on the wrong day. And then you see right here where it's talking about these plagues. We're already in a pandemic mode now. We're already in a pandemic right now. And now you're talking about the whole world missing the Feast of Passover because man put it on the wrong day. I'm predicting all heck is about to break loose from this pandemic and from other plagues that's going to take over the world is because the world is going to they're going to follow what man said and they're going to do it on the wrong day check the cal check check the calendars for yourself I don't know that I can stress this enough guys that we have to get this right on these days you can't just pick it on another day like you said up there no passing over from day to day that means you can't change the day just because man changes the date don't mean the rest of us aren't going to get our butt kicks because of it. You know, this is a protection here. These, these, this feast day is for our protection. And if we don't do it on the right day, we are giving up those, those protections. And you remember who's in charge of that calendar. It is the governments. And who is the government? The beast. That is the beast, the king, the the governments are the beast according to Daniel the governments are the beast so that's the beast telling us to do it on the wrong day the father put the moon here for us to follow and we're not following his calendar which is the moon we're following the beast calendar which is that Gregorian calendar on the wall and it's telling us to do it on the wrong day we could get in trouble guys we better be careful my prediction is is that it's going to be bad this year. 2020 is going to be a rough, rough, rough year because it is. Because it's falling on the wrong day. But anyway, I keep screaming as loud as I can. Hope somebody hears me. Verse 16. And they shall not eat it outside the sanctuary of the Lord, but before the sanctuary of the Lord. And all the people of the congregation of Israel shall celebrate it in its appointed season. All right. Now, there's a lot going on in this verse right here. You know, because, you know, what is it saying? We can't do it outside of the sanctuary. So a lot of the Jewish people, the Jewish community, the Sanhedrin or whoever it is over there that think they're in charge of the father or whatever. They think they own God is telling us that we can't have the feast of Passover because we don't have a temple but we have to remember that the sanctuary is on our heart the sanctuary that the father is talking about is in us we are his sanctuary we are his temple and that's why he never commanded us to stop even though they knocked down that brick and mortar temple over there we was not commanded to stop it's because you know the sanctuary is in us it never went away it has already been there and so when we have this this Passover festival we're doing it on a spiritual level not in a brick and mortar place with all that pomp and grandeur and all of those silver trumpets them guys gonna be blowing over there and all of that stuff mm -mm. this is this is a, a humble ceremony that we're doing spiritually to the father 
And it says right here, it says the people of the congregation of Israel is talking about spiritual Israel. It ain't talking about no bloodline Israel. It's not talking about bloodline Israel. There was only two million people out there in, in the wilderness with Moses out there. And that's and I believe that's all he's talking to now is about two million people. And you can't point to no Jewish people and you can't point to any bloodline people and say they are Israel. This is a spiritual group right here that we're, that we're talking about. Check our channel. I'm about to do another class talking about who is Israel. Talking about how we are spiritual Israel. Not blood ties, but we are spiritual Israel. And that's what he's talking about right there. Look at verse 17. And every man who has come upon its day shall eat it in the sanctuary of your God before the Lord from 20 years old and upward. For this is written and ordained that they should eat it in the sanctuary of the Lord. Now, 20 years old and upward. That's when the... That's when all of the men were old enough to go to war from 20 years old and upward. That was when you was really considered to be a, a, a man man. You actually, you know, got at the age of maturity or you got over the age of innocence at the age of 12. But it was at the age of 20 when you was ready to fight. And so now, you know, these people, everybody over the age of 20 are expected to come down to these feasts and do these feasts every year. And you know we was talking about this pandemic a few minutes ago. I heard some some I heard something on the news today about how people of the age of 20 to 64. She names 20 to 64 have a 40 something percent chance of getting uh, seriously ill from this pandemic, meaning they had to go get hospitalized, hospitalized, and get on ventilators and such. And I thought, 20 years old and over, yeah. See, the rest of them are older, older than that. 65 and up are the ones they was they was thinking was gonna get sick. But she pointed out, no, nah, it ain't just the 65 and older that are dying and getting really ill from this. Even the 20 years old and to 64 years old are getting sick too. She said 40 percent. So it's like the ones 20 years and below aren't being affected by the pandemic. The kids aren't getting this thing. And I believe this is why. It's the ones 20 years old and up that are actually paying for this thing. Because we're the ones that are being disobedient. Them 19 year olds, them 18 year olds, they, they ain't getting in trouble for not doing Passover. 20 years old and over are held accountable for this. Well, let's go on. And when the children of Israel come into the land which they are to possess, into the land of Canaan, and set up the tabernacle of the Lord in the midst of the land in one of their tribes until the sanctuary of the Lord has been built in the land, let them come and celebrate the Passover in the midst of the tabernacle of the Lord, and let them slay it before the Lord from year to year. This is talking about before the third temple is being, is built. Remember, the third temple is a spiritual temple. It's going to be built on the hearts of humanity. And But before that date, we have the tabernacle. We Our bodies is still the tabernacle before that date. And that's what it's talking about is making a distinction between... Uh, once we have the third temple or recognize the third temple or go into that third temple up until that point is telling us is telling us what to do here. We are to celebrate the Passover in the midst of that tabernacle, talking about the human tabernacle, not talking about going all the way over there to Jerusalem and play crazy with them guys over there as they get ready for this World War Three, trying to take back the Dome of the Rock or whatever. That's not what he's talking about. We are the tabernacle. We gotta stay spiritual. We gotta remember the spiritual meanings of this stuff. Let's look at verse 19. He says, In the days when the house has been built in the name of the Lord, in the place of their inheritance, they shall go there and slay the Passover in the evening at sunset at the third part of the day. Now, this is talking about after we get the third temple now the third temple is available you know I, I should have just posted a class or I'm getting ready to post a class on the third temple um, it is available to those who, who who are spiritually minded now but all of humanity will recognize the third temple after the earthquake 
but notice both times it's slaying it's both times it's saying to slay the Passover before you get the third temple slay the Passover and after you get the third temple to slay the Passover before the Lord and again you know I keep bringing that out I don't, I don't want to think anybody I don't want anybody to think that I'm harkening over the material it is the spiritual that we have to pay a close attention to let's look at 20 and they shall offer his blood on the threshold of the altar and shall place its fat on the fire which is upon the altar and they shall eat its flesh roasted with fire in the court of the house which has been sanctified in the name of the Lord again guys spiritual meaning we have to understand these spiritual meanings You know, we don't want to be splashing blood all around our houses and all of that stuff. We're not going to get any credit for that. We're not going to get any credit for that. You're not going to get much credit for having a lamb in the first place. You're not going to get much credit for having wine in the first place. If you're not recognizing the spiritual meaning behind that, all you're doing is something right. And that's what got the old guys, the Jewish guys, in trouble was it just turned it into something right where, you know, they drank some wine and they thought they was good. No, you have to recognize what's going on there spiritually 21 says and they might not and they may not celebrate the Passover in their cities nor in any place save before the tabernacle of the Lord or before his house where his name has dwelt and they shall not go astray from the Lord again talking about this third temple talking about the temple of man you know we can't run that that's telling us not to go to Jerusalem right there when we can't go into the cities that's the number one city on the planet we can Look at 22, he says, And do thou, Moses, command the children of Israel to observe the ordinances of the Passover, as it was commanded unto this day. Declare thou unto them every year and the day of its days, and the festival of unleavened bread, that they should eat unleavened bread seven days, and that they should observe its festival, and that they should bring an oblation every day during those seven days of joy before the Lord on the altar of your God meaning we have to make that burnt offering that we are supposed to make every day for seven days now notice right here how he's telling Moses to declare unto them every year and the day of his day. So he's telling Moses that he's supposed to tell them when the feast is supposed to happen. But we're allowing our beast to do that now. We're allowing the beast to do that now in the form of our calendars. A lot of us, you know, we're just going to pop on the calendar and look to see when Passover is. And we're just going to go with that. Last year they got it right. 2019 they got it right. In 2018, they got it right. But in 2020, they got it wrong. They got it wrong in 2020. And so this is what's going to get us in trouble. Again, notice how he's saying seven days of joy. These feast days are joyous occasions that we're supposed to spend with the Father. These are celebration days that we spend with the Father. So you have to understand it, it was different back then back then that it is now today you know they, they go down to the church every week but back then they really only went to the temple during these times here you know the other days they were at home you know but when they went off to the temple or whatever when they went down to uh, material Jerusalem it was actually you know only three times a day it was actually only three times in a year and so you can imagine it was a very joyous experience for them well, it's the same way now, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff going on that we don't see a lot of stuff going on in the spirit world that we don't see. But I'm sure it's a huge party in the spirit world. I'm sure, you know, those angels and stuff, they're having a lot of joy going on. And it's up to us as humans to have a joyous time too. you know, to to, you know, work at it you know when when it's just you and maybe being humbled and going through some stuff and it seems like it's kind of hard to to have joy during those times or make it fake it till you make it you know sing songs and, and do stuff make it a joyous occasion we get credit for that make it a, a joyous occasion verse 23 says for ye celebrated this festival with haste when ye went forth from Egypt till ye entered into the wilderness of Shur for on the shore of the sea ye completed it 
again talking about spiritual Egypt now for those of you who are watching this channel you probably have escaped Egypt you probably have escaped Babylon they call it uh, exit you know this is the end time exodus where the people are leaving the beast systems and getting back into the father system um, we, we have been separated we have been scattered all over the world but as we recognize these feasts and start to do them correctly and do them in their correct day we're starting to get our seal back we're starting to get our mark back we're starting to not be cut off from our people and be able to take advantage of the fact that we are spiritual Israel and it is through, and so that's why we have to remember these days every year and do these days every year. For one, that we don't get cut off, and for two, that we can remember from which we came. All right. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this class up. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. We got many, many more classes coming out. There's scriptural information that you may not find on any other channel. And if you don't have that bell button pushed down there, you might miss a lot of these classes because of the way the YouTube algorithm, YouTube algorithms work, they may not show up for you sometimes. Let's go ahead and hit that bell button if you haven't done so already and leave a comment below. Pray for us and shalom.